has begun. Smooching time! Ah! Oof. One, welcome to Two Tales, and I have something I'd like to talk about. Um, the Amico has been a, a kind of a point for this channel, and we got a message from Intellivision yesterday. So a few people have already talked about it, like G -G -G -D -D DJC. Um, so definitely, you know, check out um, information that's floating around about this. But I wanted to weigh in and throw in my two cents because there's some questions about um, whether or not Intellivision is priced itself out and in the conversations that I've seen there's a few things I've noticed that don't seem to be uh, considered so let's get into this real quick uh, first and foremost now I didn't weigh in on the GameStop kerfuffle to begin with uh, in case you don't know what that is uh, basically GameStop um, started canceling orders and that sort of thing um, based on reading this, this letter from Intellivision and my personal experience in manufacturing, I'm ready to weigh in on that. And what I think actually happened was, um, a colossal miscommunication. Now that's not to say it's excusable. It was real lousy and frankly, it was bad business, but I think the fault lies on both sides of the coin here. What I think actually happened is that Intellivision looked at its production lines, they looked at its sales numbers and uh, revenue generation and that sort of thing. And um, they needed to make a change to potentially maintain uh, their their goal at launching um, and may optimize their manufacturing lines. Uh, so as such, they went to GameStop and they said, hey, cancel pre-orders on black and white consoles. And GameStop said, hey, you got it. Let's cancel all the pre-orders for black and white consoles. And a television turned and went, no, 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 that's, that's not exactly what we meant. You know, we, we meant don't do any more pre-orders for it. And, um, yeah, so that's what I think happened. And it definitely is lousy and bad business, no matter how you look at it. But there's two net positives with, with this letter. Um, the net positives from what I can tell is, first off, it tells us that Intellivision is paying attention. And Intellivision is still actually in the fight. Um, the second thing it tells us is that Intellivision knows that the GameStop thing was was pretty bad and lousy, and they're trying to fix that um, by offering people a chance to get locked in at their pre-order price if they order directly through the company and they bring in their receipt and so forth. And um, while that's horribly inconvenient, if it's still it's probably it's still decent that they're they're trying to rectify that situation. So let's move on to the actual topic at hand, which is. Did Intellivision price itself out? My honest opinion, I'm not sure. And I know it sounds like a cop, cop out, but just like hear me out on this one. Um, the first thing, which is actually the detail that people are, are kind of overlooking, is that old information here, old information here, that the Galaxy Purple, the Vintage Wood Grain, and the Red, the red one, um, they were specialty units and they were always going to be a higher price than the base unit of the black and white. So what that says to me is that when the black and white consoles become available again, we should see them at a lower price. Now, um, as far as other potential price impacts, that sort of thing, you know, yes, there's inflation. Um, and I'll be honest, even with Qualcomm, who's making the Smart Dragon chips or Snapdragon chips, um, hiring a second manufacturing line um the amico needs a set of chips you need processors for the controllers and the console and processors take months and months very time consuming to make so i don't think component wise we're going to see a drop in price anytime soon from that and that's unfortunate but what i mean by i don't know if they've priced themselves out is because i can see this in two ways Setting aside the base units having a potentially lower price, at first glance, I wince at this price. This is not cheap. 
and uh, I made no bones about it after my six month break, uh, coming back and finding out that the controller's price had gone up. That didn't make me happy. But with the free app on smartphones and tablets that would allow you to play anyway, I was uh, willing to go, okay, I'm fine with this because uh, controllers had moved from where I could buy them outright to needing to budget for them. But I had a stand in at no cost to me and I thought that was acceptable. So that's kind of the first thing I think about here is that um, even at this price, you're going to get the six games. And even if you buy the cheaper unit with the one controller, you have this free app. So now you're looking at, because like my household, basing it on my family, my household has got five people, not counting my mother-in-law, that is, uh, that we take care of. Um, we have uh, three smartphones and a smart tablet around. So even with one controller, my whole family can play out of the box at no charge to us. So I think that when you go into the store, and me, if I was to go into the store and I'd be comparing a lesser known brand like an Intellivision to something like um, a Nintendo Switch, and I use that specifically because the Joy-Cons can work as two controllers, there's a couple things I'd have to consider. The first thing is I find it really hard to think that having six built-in games, knowing that some Switches do not come with games, and my whole family being able to play out of the box with at no additional money out of my pocket. That's just something that really I can't overlook. And it, then it kind of comes down to the value that's presented there versus the name brand and the reputation that has been established. Um, because the question is, is how much is that reputation and brand, how much value does that actually bring when you're talking about comparable prices there? So... In that case, I also would have to consider, well, if I start with free games here and the ability for people to play for free, but over here on, on the Switch that may not come with a game, and um, if I wanted the whole family to play something like Mario Party, I'd have to invest in additional con controllers. Now I'm looking at a much higher, higher price point there. Um, but it also leaves me with one, one additional thing right? Uh, and I think it's something else that can't really be overlooked in this kind of concept of whether this is overpriced, is the potential library at launch. Now, what I mean by that is that in television, um, I don't know, I don't have this information, um, but in television was uh, going to launch their digital library at a very low price point. Now, if that still holds true, even if it, it goes up a little bit, um, then you're in a situation where you're st you still have games that are extremely cheap compared to mainstream games, right? And the categories for the games are so broad, it offers kind of a flavor for everyone. I think that if the system moves and people get online and they share those experiences and it's a positive experience, the potential for a vast whole family experience at a cheaper rate. I just don't think that can be ignored. But at the same time, I really don't know. It depends on if the system moves. It depends on if the, the market stabilizes. It, you know, if they move higher than this, it's definitely going to be a console killer. But I, I'm just not certain that this, at this point, actually is because of the lower prices on the standard units which eventually should come back available the the free additional people playing and that, that sort of thing at the end of the day though um it's really do or die we need to see movement um we need to to at least hear uh, a potential expectation on it what what time this year that it's supposed to be coming out um and hopefully we'll hear that soon but uh that's my thoughts all the best to you fine foxy people two tails out